Alice Chapter 6, Lesson 1. All the lessons in this chapter are going to be about creating games using the concepts that you have been learning for the first five chapters. So we're going to be doing things like loops, variables, and while loops, conditions, ifs, all those fun things, uh, parameter passing, all the things that we've been learning for the first five chapters. We're going to put it all together and create some games. The first game is going to be Click the Pixie Game. This program is going to use random numbers, a loop, and a variable. So we're going to start out fairly simple, and this game will be really easy to customize in the end. So we're going to have a pixie, or you can pick any object, any animal, will randomly appear somewhere on the screen. This is where we're going to use our random numbers. And we're going to use a mouse click event to click on the pixie or animal, and we will have it click count every time that we do actually click on the animal. Then you can determine how many clicks you would need in order to win. So you're either going to win or lose determined by how many clicks you get. This is a one player game. You're going to play against the computer. The computer picks the random location for the pixie or animal and has it appear. And then it will disappear and you have to try and click it before that happens. There are many variations to the game which we will discuss at the end. We're going to start by setting the scene. This program has not been started for you like many of the other ones have. So this is going to be totally up to you on what scene you pick and what animal you use. In this example, and on the example that you saw for the finish game, I used a fantasy starter and I used a pixie. But you can really use anything. So the example that I'm going to show you, I did something a little bit different. Let's take a look. For my scene, I chose a uh, uh, Mars scene and I picked a alien robot and I picked an alien. So you don't have to do a pixie or fantasy. You can pick anything you want. You could use a jungle with um, a lion on it. You could use the desert with a, a coyote. You could use the fish as the sea with the fish. Whatever things that you want. But you're going to have one of them that's going to appear randomly on the scene. So I just wanted to do something a little bit different and the green alien really shows up well against the red background. So I thought this would be a fun way, a fun variation of the game. So don't feel like you have to do the fantasy tab and the pixie. You can use whatever you want. You want to set your scene and I, the alien is the one that's going to appear and disappear. And the little robot here is just going to be giving the directions. So it's good to have something else, you know, besides just the alien. Once you have your scene set, we're going to start on some of the procedures. Now we're going to create a few procedures for the animal. So if you did the fantasy scene, it would be for the pixie. For me, it's going to be for the alien. The two that we need in particular are we're going to make it hide. We'll basically set the opacity to zero, and we're going to make it pop up. We're going to make it appear, so we'll set the opacity to one and pick some random numbers. We're also going to have an introduction procedure that's going to give the instructions. Let's go ahead and get that started. So I'm going to click on the alien, and I'm because the hide and the pop-up are going to be just for the alien, so I can make them class level. I'm going to come here and go to my biped. Let's create a biped procedure for hide. This is going to be one simple step, and I don't even need a parameter or anything for it. It's just going to be simply that the alien opacity gets changed to zero. I'm going to scroll, scroll down here, find opacity, and set it to zero. Now, if I want this to happen very quickly, I can change the duration to something as small as I possibly can. Let's do a, a custom decimal number of 0.01. So very quickly it will turn, it will disappear. Not slowly. That's a little detail that you can add, something that's kind of neat there. And that's all there is to hiding. So I've got the hide procedure done. It was pretty simple. Now before I actually do the pop-up, I do want to go back and set and take a look at my scene. I'm going to click here on the scene. And I had my alien down here at the bottom. It's really important that whatever object you pick, that you put it in the center. So I very quickly went and I've changed it. I can use the translate tool if I need to. And I want to make sure that it's in the center. We're not going to see it when we start the program, but in order for the random numbers to work well, the alien really does kind of need to be in the center. The more center that you have it, the better the game's going to be. So I'm actually even going to move it up a little bit, kind of have it about like that. So make any adjustments if you need to, and even if you think it looks funny, make sure your animal is in the middle of the screen. 
Now let's go over here and do a pop-up. So I went to Biped, I created a new procedure for pop-up. And we're going to be using random numbers. If you recall from Chapter 5, when we did random numbers, I put them in a do together because I wanted the object to move at the same time in any of these directions. So using a do together is really important. Make sure you include that and that you put all your steps inside it. Now for my um, alien, I'm going to have it move, of course, left, right, and up, down. So let's go ahead and put those in. So I'm going to have it move left. I pick any number as my placeholder. I'm going to do the same thing for my move um, up. Pick a number. I'm going to change this to my random number. And I'm going to just pick any two things as my placeholders. And I have to kind of guess, because I don't really know how far. But let's just start with maybe 8, 8 or 10. And we're going to test it to see if these numbers work great. And we can make adjustments as we need to. So I'm going to have my upper be 8. And my lower is going to be the exact same, but negative. So I'm going to do a negative 8. And let's do the same thing for my up and down. I might need to make it smaller. It might be OK being the same. Let's just give it a try. So I'm going to do 8. Oh, I need to make it a random number. Pick any 2. And now I make this one 8. And this one negative 8. Now we also have a choice. If you want to, you can do forward, backward. Because I do have some depth to my scene. We didn't use this in the other ones because we wanted to kind of keep it where, you know, not floating up in the ground or whatever. But I can do all three because my alien can move all over in that space area. So I am going to move up another one. This time I'm going to say forward, backward. So I'm just going to put forward. I'm going to change it to a random number. But I'm going to make this random number a smaller range because I don't want it to go way in the back or it would be difficult to see. So I might do just two. And then I'll make this one negative two. Now, when we do incremental development, I want to test this just to see if my numbers are working right. After I get the random number, I also need to change his opacity to 1 so that he will show up. Now, all of these is going to happen in one second. Actually, it will take two seconds for all this. So I'm going to change my duration to the smallest that I can. I'm going to put 0 0.01, so a hundredth of a second. I'm just going to change all of my durations to 0 0.01. Even here where I'm setting the opacity. So I want all of this to happen very quickly. And I want to test this. So I'm going to come here to my first method. I don't really need to test hide. I know it's only one line of code. I know it's going to work. But in my first method, I'm going to just try the pop-up. Run it several times and see if I do indeed see my alien. So I see him, I see him. If it looks like your numbers are right most of the time, then you can keep it. Now this one, I don't see the alien. It could be in one of these rocks, and that's just going to happen sometimes. And if that's the case, you might not want to move him forward or backward, so he tends to stay up. So it's kind of up to you how you want to make it go. But it looks like for the most part my numbers are good. My up and down might be a little high. So instead of 8, maybe I want 7. So you can just kind of make adjustments as need be depending on the size of your animal. But remember to make them uh, the top and bottom the same. So one's just negative. So I'm going to do a negative 7 here. And I'm going to keep the other ones. But you can just test it as you go and see if you're happy with this. Once I'm happy with it, I can take this off. I've done my testing. I don't need that anymore. So I've got my biped level hide, and I've got my bop pop up. And the next thing I'm going to do is do an intro. So what I did was I came here to scene, and I did a scene level intro. Okay. And then I just put in, this is where I used my robot, and I just put in some says. And I changed the duration longer this time because it takes time for people to read. So you can make your introduction whatever you want. I put welcome to my game. An alien will appear on the screen. You will have one second to find and click on it. Click on 10 aliens before time runs out to win. Now you can adjust these numbers. So I chose one second and I chose 10 aliens. You can put whatever numbers you want there. And one of the variations we'll have later on is that you can adjust this for 
easy, medium, or hard. So we've got the basis of a game right here. And we can test all this. We can kind of put it together, and make sure it's going to work. Well, the first thing we want in my first method is we actually do want to hide the alien. And we have a procedure for that. So if I click on him, I'm going to hide the alien so he doesn't show it all. And then I want to call the intro. And the intro is here under scene. So I'm just going to click on the scene and I find intro. So these first two things should just hide the alien and tell the introduction. After that, I want to use a loop and I'm going to have the alien just pop up several times. So let's, I wanted to click 10 aliens. So I can make it 10. Let's just make it like 15. So I'm going to have 15 aliens pop up. So inside my loop, I want to do the pop up and I want to do a hide. Now in between here, I need to have a little bit of a delay that gives the time the person a time to find it and click on it. And my instructions, I said it was going to be one second. You're going to determine your own, but we, we do see a delay right here. So I'm just going to pop that up. And for me, I'm going to put one second. You can decide. You can see that you've got some choices, or you can even put it on your own custom. So if you want two seconds to click, if you want one second, one and a half, you can decide. You. So I'm going to pop up, have a delay where they click on it, and hide. Now let's just run this. We haven't actually counted or used a, a click or anything yet, but we can just test to see is this part working. In order to do that, I might only want it to do five times just as a tester. So I'm going to change this to five. And if it's working five times, I know I'm good to go. So there's my introduction. Okay, so did you count five aliens? So we know that this part is working. Let's go back to our instructions and see what's going to come next. Okay, so we did the hide and we did pop up and we created a scene procedure for our intro. And our code probably looks something kind of like this. Okay, and here's our intro, something very similar. Okay, and we've also did our first method where we hid the, the animal, we called the intro, and we used a loop for all of these things. So our code looks something kind of like this. Okay, now we're going to use a variable. When we used variables at the end of chapter 5, we did them in my first method. So we made them basically kind of like for that procedure. We're going to use a variable that is at the scene level this time. So it's going to look the same, but finding it is just a little bit different. We're going to create a count variable, and then we're going to be using it in our click events. Let's, when we do that, we'll do a mouse click event to actually increment. Let's go ahead and do those steps. So I'm here on my home screen, and I'm going to come over here. I'm going to go to scene. You see all the way down here, I'm going to add a scene property. So the variable is actually going to be part of the scene property. Let's go ahead and click on it. And this looks just like we were declaring a variable. We have a variable right here, and its type is a whole number. Remember when we count, we count with whole numbers. And I'm going to call this counter. And it's going to start at zero. Whenever we count, we always start at zero. Now the advantage of putting this at the scene property is that I can use it throughout all my procedures and my events. If I put it just in my first method, I wouldn't be able to use it in my event, so I'm going to put it here. And the computer will be able to find it. I'm going to come to my event listeners and I'm going to add a mouse click event. So let's go to mouse, and I click on. Remember the first thing you have to do here, I've seen a few of you forget this, but you have to have your if statement. We start with it true, but we have to go ahead and come down here to relational s thing, equals equals, and I want I'm going to be clicking on the alien. So if I click on the alien and I have to use my parameter right there. So what do I want to happen when if I click on the alien? I need to increment my counter. I'm going to come down here to the assign tile. I have already created the variable so I do not need this tile. I'm just going to come right to the assign tile. I'm going to drag it up and you'll see that counter is already there. 
and I'm just going to assign it to this counter. Now I need to also add one because right now counter equals counter. I'm going to come here to my math and add the plus one. So now I'm going to add one to my counter and reassign it to counter. I've just incremented my counter. Now the last thing we want to do is determine if the player is going to win or lose. In my instructions, I said that you had to click on 10 aliens in order to win. This is going to be an if statement. We're going to create another procedure for this. Like we have one for intro. We can also do this for ending. So I'm going to come here to scene and I'm going to do an ending. This is where I can determine if I win or lose. So let's drag up an if statement. And I want to know is my counter greater than or equal to 10. So my, it's a whole number. I'm counting with whole numbers. I'm going to use the greater than or equal to and I'm going to put 10. I'm going to start with counter. And I'm going to have 10. Now if you get mixed up, remember you can always change these. I want to compare my counter to 10. If it is greater than or equal to 10, then I want to print a message that says they win. I have my alien robot here. He's going to come in handy. So I'm going to have him say something like, congratulations, you win. And if the counter isn't 10 or more, he's going to say something like, um, too slow, you lose. So I've got my ending. Let's go ahead and finish in my first method. All of this is working great. And then the last thing I need to do is call my ending. So I'm clicking on the scene again. Here's ending. And then you see that the counter variable is there. So that's all good. But our mouse event is going to take care of all of that. So we've put it all together. When we run it. We should see 15 aliens pop up. So I'm going to change this to 15 now. Give myself a chance. If I keep it at 5, there's no way I can get to 10, is there? So I should see 15 aliens. I should see most of them. Some of them might hide in the rocks. I'm going to see if I can click on them. See if I have better luck this time. Okay, and I'm finding that he's going off the screen a little bit. So at this point, I might want to come back to my pop-up and say these numbers are maybe too big. So let's just try 1 and negative 1. And let's try maybe 5. And negative 5. And see if we have better luck. And he's kind of gone. Oh, oh. Mm Okay, it looks like I definitely have better luck, so those numbers are better, and I can keep tweaking them until I get it just the way I want it. And I suggest you do the same, too. You can also determine here in my first method the amount of delay that you want. So you want to work on this and just keep tweaking your numbers, getting th and maybe even moving your alien a little bit, getting things working just the way you want, and then you're going to be ready for some variations. We'll get to that in our next lecture.